You are welcoming. You're welcoming. Hallelujah. Is God welcome in your place of work? Is God welcome wherever you go? And so when you go to the club, do you say, God, would you wait outside? To be with you 24 7. If not, you need to be there. I wouldn't go anywhere without my God. As a matter of fact, years ago, you used to hear people say, Don't leave home without it. He's more than that American experience. Hello, I'm Apostle Dr. Gloria W. Wright, and you have tuned in to Day Spring International Ministries, a place of refuge and a filling station for those who are spiritually wounded. We are a reconciliation ministry, a ministry that will take in persons who have gotten fed up with church, left church for many reasons. They left church because they didn't like the pastor. They left church because the choir director wouldn't let them sing lead. They left church because the parking attendant would not let them park in a certain place. There are many people out there who have left church, left church hurt, left church saying they'll never go back again. There has to be a place of refuge for those persons who have left church. And we are opening up the doors here at WAIN TV studio for those who have no church home. You don't have to stay. We just invite you to come. Come and still hear the word of God. Don't turn your back on God. Don't turn your back on God. Don't go home to Bed Street Baptist and say, I'm never going to go back to church again. God loves you. I said God loves you. Amen. And you should love God because God is our creator and our sustainer. Amen. Amen. Again, we are here at 3105 Washington Road here in the WAIN TV studio across from the Piggly Wiggly uh, shopping mall. You're welcome to come. You may not see a lot of cars out there. Don't pay that any attention. Drive up into the parking lot and come inside and take a seat and join us. Help us to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Doesn't matter your color, your race, your creed, it doesn't matter your age. We are looking for God's people. It doesn't matter whether you're hurt or not. We take you hurt or unhurt. But we want you to know that there's someone here at Dayspring who can also show you the love of God. Amen, amen, and amen. This is something we want to say today that we are in some perilous times right now. In this country, you know, women just celebrated being... uh, How shall I say it? Women did not have rights to vote, so the 19th Amendment was passed. I think it was the 18th. But we want you to know that now that we can vote, we have to remember we need to register to vote. We're going to show you in the next few months to years that we're going to have to keep remembering to vote our consciousness, vote our conviction. Now, you may say, why is she talking about that? Because it's all relevant. Amen. So I want you to just be more uh, active in the community and active in your church or active in a church, a Bible-believing church, such as Day Spring International. Amen. So we're going to now invoke God's presence. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would come right now into this place that we call church. But, oh, God, we know we don't have to call it church, but wherever you are, there is church in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies. We thank you, God, for getting us up today and getting us started, clothed in our right minds, giving us the activity of our limbs and having a chance to let us say again, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless those who are here and those who are yet on the way. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 
We are now uh, going to get ready for the word of God that God has in store for you, God's people. Now, I, I don't know what you've been through this week. I don't know what you've been through in your lifetime. But I pray that you will share this video because I believe God is going to speak directly to you today. So I want you to stay tuned. You may call someone and tell them that Dayspring is now streaming live from 3105 Washington Road. And if you don't get here, you're welcome to share the video uh, on your Facebook page or your YouTube page. We would appreciate it. And also you can reach us. You can reach us if you write us at Post Office Box 10507. And that is Atlanta, Georgia, 30310. And, of course, we thank you for all that you do. We ask of continuous prayers and possibly your donations if you can afford it. May God bless you richly. Amen. We're going to ask now uh, one of our ministers to come who has connected with us. As many have, some have come, some have gone. But we are also inviting ministers who are out there. Now, the Lord is telling me there are some ministers out there sitting in the pulpits, and they don't really want to be there because they want to start their own churches. Well, we started Dayspring, and I am the apostle who can ordain you, who also can be your covering, to allow you to start that church you've been dreaming about, that God has been nudging you to do. So you, this may be the answer to your question. How shall I get started? I have all of the wherewithal as to how to start a church legally. Amen? So come by. Come by and hook up with us, and I will enlighten you as to what you are to do. And I pray God's blessings upon you and what God has called you to do. Amen? We're going to ask Minister Anderson to come and read our scripture lesson for today's message. Amen? Come uh, quickly, and it is First John four twenty and twenty one. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. First John four and twenty. It reads as follows: If we say we love God, but hate others, we are liars. For we cannot love God, whom we have not seen. If we do not love others whom we have seen, the command that Christ has given us is this. Whoever loves God must love others also. Thank you for your listening. And may God add a blessing to the reading and the doing of his word. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Anderson. You're such a blessing to this ministry, and we thank you for always here, uh, blessing Apostle and blessing this ministry. Amen. Amen. We'd like for you to take your Bibles right now and turn with us to the scripture that was just read for your hearing, uh, 1 John 4, chapter 4, verses 20. And 21. <clears throat> and he read it for you. And guess what? I'm going to read it again because I need to read it before I preach it because I want it to take root right here in our hearts so that the Lord will use us to God's glory. Amen. Amen. So here we are. He read it for you. I'll read it again. Let's go to 1 John. Are you in First John? Chapter 4, verses 20 and 21. It says, if we say we love God, but, everybody say but, but. hate others, we are liars. For we cannot, say cannot. cannot, we cannot love God whom we have not seen if we do not love others. Whom we have seen. And then in verse 21, the command that Christ has given us is this. Whoever, 
love God must love others also. Amen. Lord, I ask that you would use these lips of clay, that they will speak to your people and give us revelation, knowledge, and wisdom. And we pray that it will be inspiring. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. The, the, the message is entitled today, Do You Hate God? I thought that would wake you up. Do you hate God? Somebody might be saying, why would I hate God? No, I don't hate God. I love God. But we're going to find out, do you really, really love God? Or are you perpetrating? But you really, really hate God by your actions. Amen? I want to just say that as you read the newspaper these days and you see in the paper all of the hatred that's out there in the street, in the schools, everywhere, hatred and bigotry, racism, all are on the rise. Never went any place, but it's on the rise again. I mean, it is really, really mind-boggling to think about this is the United States of America. It seems sometimes when I wake up, I am in a foreign land because I don't recognize the United States that I remembered even a year ago. Hello, somebody. So it's been one year that this nation has been turned upside down. Now, why? I'll let you answer that question because I cannot tell you what to think. But I do know that one reason that this nation is turned upside down is because this selfishness and this hatred has come out and reared its ugly head once again. Didn't go any place. Was lying dormant. But it was always there. The hatred of people who don't like certain people, certain gender certain color, certain creed. They don't like you if you make too much money. They don't like you if you don't have any money. They don't like you if you're homeless. They don't like you if you're gay. They don't like you. And they go on to say, I hate gays. I hate black people. Well, how can you hate these people who are really children of God, and yet say that you love God. Question is, do you hate God? Now, when I think about the word hate, hate is an emotion, and so is love. I see the opposite of hate as love in the same. Love versus hate. This scripture helps us to understand how we should feel about loving God and loving God's people. It is saying that if a man say, I love God, and then he says, I hate black people, or if he says, I hate gays, he's a liar if he says he loves God. For he that does not love gays does not love transgender, who does not love people who live on the other side of the tracks. These people, I say, if you hate people who are so-called lower than you, according to your standards, how then can you love the God who made these people as God has made you? God is the creator and the sustainer of all mankind. So when you say you hate this or you hate that, then you're not showing love for the God who created you. Sorry to say it, but it's true. When you think about hate, you hear little children sometimes say, I hate broccoli, I hate green vegetables, 
I hate going to school. I hate this or I hate that. Men who say, I hate a woman who wears false hair and false eyelashes. I hate, I hate, I hate. Well, let me just tell you. I think a better word might be I dislike certain things. But I would caution you not to show too much hate for anything. Hello, somebody. Because when we start talking about human beings that we hate, I'm here to tell you, when you hate God's people, you are showing that you really hate God because God is in these people. God is love. Everybody ought to say it. In your household, say it. God is love. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hello, somebody. He gave his son who took upon his back our sins. For God's son had no sins. He was whipped, put on the cross and whipped some more. He was whipped and he died and was buried he had said he would get up in three days and all of the prophets began to talk about this Jesus who would rise up in three days and he did. Hello somebody. I'm here to tell you when you live in love with God's son Jesus we live in God and God lives in us. Hello somebody. Because God is. Everybody say, God is. God is our creator. God is our sustainer. God is our provider. God is our healer. Hello, somebody. Now, God is invisible. Some people say, well, I saw God. Well, I can't argue with you. But I've never seen God in person. I've seen God in the spirit. They say, we love God. And that we love this God that we find to be invisible. But we feel God's presence. I said we feel God's presence. I want you to know that my resource tells me that the eye affects the heart. But things that which are seen do not catch the mind and this heart. Even though God is invisible... But a fellow Christian has much God visible in him. In other words, when you see me, you ought to see God. That's why it's imperative that we keep preaching salvation. Because when you preach salvation and get people saved, you will begin to see the God in that person. You see, when you don't have God in you, that means you are living in the natural and not the spirit. That means you do whatever you want to do. But I'm here to tell you that as a man, a woman of God, you cannot work for Burger King. You cannot have it your way. You have to teach and preach what the word of God says. Hello, somebody. Christians have to understand that when you misuse and abuse a person whom God has made, you are really disrespecting, showing no respect for God who made you like God made that person. Hello, somebody. So the question is, then, shall the hater of a visible image of God pretend to love the invisible God himself. Let me say that again. Shall the hater of a visible image of God pretend to love the invisible God himself? Hmm. Verse 21 of our scripture tells us we are commanded, didn't say suggested, we are commanded to love God, hello somebody, to the utmost. Somebody put it this way, su supremely. 
We are to love God. We must love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul. God has been too good to us not to love him. And so when we find people misusing children, babies, wives and husbands and children in school, when you see this happening, where is the love of God in people who misuse people? Where is that love? Hello, somebody. In Matthew 5, 44, let me start with 43, says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Hello, somebody. But in verse 44 of Matthew 5, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you? Anybody persecuted you lately? Think about it. If somebody persecuted your brother or your sister, and I don't mean your relative, I mean anybody who's a human being, if they persecuted that person, they also persecuted you. Like we were saying, if you're not showing the love of Jesus Christ to other people, there's no love in you. In verse 45, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise. Hello, somebody. Or the evil and the good. He can send rain on either one. You might say, well, why is it raining on my neighbor's garden? He is so evil. Because God is not one who would discriminate. He's going to rain on your parade when it's, when it's time and he thinks it is. He's going to rain on your garden when it's time. So what we need to understand is God rains and super rains. That's another rain. Hello, somebody. I want you to know that the question is, do you hate God? Well, let me tell you, you do hate God if you hate God's beings human beings, animals, and mistreat them. God is using his divine surveillance camera to see all the good that we do and also all the bad that we can do. If you don't believe it, think about it this way. When you're riding down 285 or you're riding up and down 75 and 85, there are surveillance cameras that watch everything that you do. I just passed by one exit on 166. Someone just put up five big tires from a car or a truck right at the exit. Who does that? Someone who doesn't care because the cameras certainly can see who put those tires out there. I say that to say everything that we do, God sees it. Now, God doesn't deal with our automobile tags like they can see the person who dumped those tires. God sees you as the driver of the car or the truck that came there and dumped those tires out there. Hello, somebody. I'm here to tell you today that if you're going to say that you love God, but yet you hate certain people, you are a liar, the Bible says. Hello, somebody. How shall we love people? We shall love them with compassion. We should love others with compassion and goodwill toward them, even if they are our enemies. We are to love everyone in spite of what they do, in spite of what they say. You may say, it's hard for me to love, number what, 40 what? The president, 45. 45, but I, I really have to tell you, 
it's hard for me to understand him. But you know what? I had to have a little talk with the Lord about him. And I said, Lord, how must I deal with this? I see so much wrong that's coming out of the WH. How does one as a Christian deal with the fact that there is so much hatred that's being perpetrated? There's so much hatred that, be, that is being ignited in this country based on what leadership says. It's almost like the child that says, I, I, I didn't throw that paper. I didn't throw that spitball. The other boys threw it. But you made it. You made the spitball, even though other people were throwing the spitballs. I use that as an analogy to the fact that we have leadership that has to show love, has to show compassion to all people. Did you hear that? We must show love and compassion to all people. And as I close, I'll say this one more time. We must have compassion for even our enemies and goodwill toward our enemies. One, two, three. Here we go. Speak well of them that despitefully use you. Speak well of them. In fact, when somebody does something wrong and you say, Hi, Mr. Jones, how are you feeling today? You know he just cut you and you cut your throat and stabbed you in the back. But you show goodness toward him. You know, some people say it this way. They say, let me kill him with kindness. Well, let's not look at it that way. Let's just put kindness out there to let people know that you are good and lovable and loving even when they are not. Second thing, do well to them, those who hurt you and those who misuse you and lie about you and criticize you and talk about you, about your color, about your race, about your beliefs. Do well by them. And three, pray for them. Pray for them who persecute you. Pray that God would forgive them. And then when you pray that God would forgive them, you forgive them. You know, you, another way of saying this is some people say, you have to be the better man. You have to be the better man. You have to be the better woman. If somebody is treating you wrong, don't sink to their level. Rise above it and say, I serve a God who can do anything but fail. And I know this God loves me. And because God loves me, I love God the more. And therefore, because I love God, I must learn to love God's people. I may not like what they believe. I may not like what they do. But the Bible says that we are to love the sinner, not the sin. Love the sinner. So whatever people are doing that you see are wrong, things are wrong, love them back to rightness. Love people. When they see you loving on them in spite of their negativity, in spite of their evil ways, they'll say, wonder why he's so nice to me. Wonder why she's so nice to me. I've seen couples. I've seen couples who go in divorce courts, and, and, and the men, uh, they do everything they can not to pay child support and alimony, and the woman is just as nice. She says, okay, if you don't want to pay for your children, fine. And then they begin to get a conscience. Say, oh my goodness, I thought she was going to raise saying, No, be kind to people who are cutting you down. Be the bigger man. Be the bigger woman. Be an imitator of Christ Jesus. The Bible talks about being an imitator of Christ. So Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, read it. Be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us an offering, a sacrifice to God, 
a fragrant aroma. Walk with the Lord all the way, not half, half stepping. Walk all the way with the Lord. Do everything the Bible says. Don't try to shortchange yourselves. Know that God loves you just like he loves the other guy. Just like he loves the dark man. Just like he loves the white man or the red man. God loves his creation. We all bleed the same blood. And if we were in need of a kidney, we wouldn't turn down a black person's kidney. I'll guarantee you that. We wouldn't turn down a black person's lung because we know that that lung would help us to live. We know we wouldn't turn down that heart from a black woman because we know that that heart beats the same way that our heart beats. And we have to be the one to put love in that heart. So I pray to you today and to God that you will understand that you have the capacity to love, but you have to have Jesus Christ in your life. So I ask today that you would ask God to come into your life by sending Jesus your way. He's already sent him, but the door is closed until you open it. Open up the doors of your heart and invite Jesus to come in. And then you will be surprised at the love that will come flowing out of your heart. Even if it's a heart that has been donated. I pray God's blessings upon you and yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You're broken down and tired. Living life on the merry-go-round You can't find a fighter But I see it in you So we gon' walk it out Ooh, one day We gon' walk it out Silence is in quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we would take the world to its feet Ooh, I'll take Bring it to its feet
a thousand times.